So hi everyone, my name's Kathy, and I come from Echuca. Has anybody been to Echuca? No one come from Echuca? Yeah, we've got a few people that have been to Echuca. And we're here to do some really good stuff for you. So there's lots of things behind you that you can have a look at when I'm finished having a little bit of a chat. Who can tell me what their favourite Australian animal is? Yep. An emu? A snake? I like snakes. A cat? A koala. Have you got a favourite Australian animal? What do you like? No? Butterflies. Butterflies. There's lots of loads around this year. What's your favourite Australian animal? A koala. Well, do you know something? All of those animals are all great Australian animals, but guess what? I like bugs. Bugs are the things I like. And did you know that there's more bugs than anything else by lots and lots? So about 90% of all the animals in Australia are not kangaroos and koalas and snakes. They're bugs. So bugs are pretty cool and pretty important. So I might need someone to give me a bit of a hand in a minute. So someone who likes dressing up and looking really beautiful. Oh, that'll be you! Because <laughs> we want to talk a little bit about bugs. So, yeah, okay, come on, come and be my bug person. What's your name? Arnica. Arnica? So, Arnica's going to help me talk about a little bit about bugs. So, bugs are not just everything. What do you think a bug is? What's something that's a bug? Well, that's the fantastic words there. We'll talk about that one in a minute. Yep. Put. Um, a rhino beetle's a fantastic bug. Yep. Yes. They're small and sometimes they're They do. Does anyone know something else about a bug? No? Okay, so bugs are all of that. When we're talking about bugs, we're really talking about all those little things that don't have a skeleton on the inside of your, their, their body. So they've actually got a skeleton on the outside of their body. So that's mostly what we're talking about. When we talk about bugs, sometimes we talk about snails and slugs and things like that as well. And they don't have an exoskeleton or an outside skeleton, but we talk about them too. They're, they're kind of bugs. They're a bit buggy too, so we talk about all those things. Oh, and my amazing bugs have blown off. Okay, so let's start by thinking about this really special group of bugs that you've probably all heard of and they're called insects. Who can tell me something about an insect? Yep. They have six legs. Did you know? Did you know that an insect had six legs? Yeah? What else do we know about an insect? They are really hard to keep out, and especially at the moment, they're really hard to keep out of the house. Are you having a cricket plague here? Yes. Yeah. So we've got them everywhere. And have you had the grasshoppers as well? You had the locusts? Yeah. No, but just, gra just grasshoppers. Yeah. Have you got anything else? Anything else in plague proportions at the minute? Earwigs. Oh, earwigs. Yeah, the earwigs are starting to come. And millipedes. And millipedes. Yeah. So they're all great bugs. Okay, but what we're going to do is have a look at George. This is my friend George. And George is not a bug. George is a bit like us. A bit what, what we might look like if we took off our skin. So this is all muscle, all down here and all ligaments that join us all together. 
And you guys can't see very well, but around this side, I might turn him around a bit so you can see as well. Can you see all this? This is all the ribs. Yeah? Have you got ribs? Yeah. Yeah, of course you have. And this is his intestine. And what's this under here? What are these? What are these white things that go down here? Bones. And what are your bones? What do they do? It does. Joins you all together. Do you know what the job of your bones or your skeleton is? What do, what do they do to help you? They do help you. They help you move. They do? Yeah. They stabilise you. You'd be a big blob of jelly sitting on the floor, wouldn't you? Yeah. So we didn't want to be big blobs of jelly. No. So we've got our skeleton inside us which keeps us, holds us up, gives us strength and your ribs protect the things that are inside you. So your heart and your lungs are all getting some protection from it, from your skeleton. But bugs don't have that. Bugs have a different sort of skeleton. Bugs have their skeleton on the outside of their bodies. And we're going to make, sorry, what was your name? Arnica. Arnica into an insect. So to make Arnica into an insect, she needs to have an exoskeleton or an outside skeleton. So this is going on your arms. Very nice. Beautiful. So now we've got a bit of an exoskeleton happening. But Arnica's only got one, two, three, four legs and we want to make her into an insect. How many legs does an insect have? Six. Six legs. So we'll just give her a couple more around here, will we? These are looking pretty good. Okay. Now she's looking a bit more buggy. Beautiful. She's looking beautiful. And we need a few more things to make her into a bug. Does anybody know anything about bugs' eyes? Has anyone had a look at some bugs' eyes over there? What do you know about them? Um, they have like all the different eyes. Fantastic, they have compound eyes. So we need Annika to have some compound eyes. Here's our eyes. So we need to put these on because, yeah, we won't put them on your face. We'll just put them up here. Okay, can you still see? Oh, I've nearly broke my compound eyes. So, bugs have beautiful compound eyes that look like this. So they're not, not like ours. Well, they also have something coming out of their head. What do they have coming out of Oh, antennas. Do you know what the job of the antennas is? Yep. Fantastic, that's what we wanted. So our antennas have got a nose on it because bugs smell with their antennas. So we'll put these on Annika. She's looking pretty fantastic now. Pretty cool. What else do we need, Robin? Ears. Where do they hear, Eddie? On their legs, don't they? If you were a cricket, Annika, you would have these beautiful ears. Lift your leg. <laughs> on oh it doesn't matter Annika doesn't mind hearing upside down do you if she was a cricket she'd be hearing out of her knees well that's pretty cool isn't it do you think she makes a pretty good insect she does she makes a fabulous insect Let's give her a big clap because she looks pretty cool. All right, we'll take all this off her now. Rob, I need to glue that one back together, that eye. Undress her. Take her legs off and her arms off. And her ears, do you want to keep those ears? I don't think so. <laughs> we'll take them off as well. Hang on to my shoulder.
Fantastic. Thank you, Annika. You were fantastic. You make a very good bug. Yeah, give her a big clap. Okay, I've got some of my own bugs that I bought because I love bugs. So I bought some of my own I'd like you to meet. And we've got a special guest bug today. We've got Charlie and what's your name? Ben. Ben, Ben, are you going to hang on to Charlie for me? So Charlie lives here in Colac and he's Ben's... She. She. Come on, Charlie. Hop on. Hop on. Hop on. Right, you go and stand out here. So this is Charlie and he's Ben's pet and this is Twiggy. So Twiggy and Charlie are both spiny leaf insects. What can you tell me about Charlie? Ben? She she does have spikes to protect her from birds and things and we'll bring her around. You might like to go around and show everybody a bit closer what Charlie looks like. She won't bite you. She's not scary. She's really beautiful. And in a little while you'll be able to have a hold of her. She's got little spikes on her feet because she's got to hang on to the tree. She lives in trees right up the top and she hangs upside down like this. Yeah. No, no, don't, because they hang on really tight. And they do sway in the breeze like this. So if it was a breeze. And they just look like dead leaves. So I'll bring her over and to show. How? Oh, they're tough. Because the, the boy one doesn't look like this. He's not all curled up like this. He looks a bit different. And see her tiny little wings? Yeah, be round your bottom. When you want to keep them as pets, where do you get them? Okay, I'll, I'll just, yeah. Okay, so guys, these animals live in um, Queensland and they live in, in gum trees. They just eat gum leaves, so they're a fantastic pet. Um, and very easy, very clean, there's no smell, and they're just the most gorgeous creatures. They only live for two to three years at maximum. So these are the female ones. The male ones have got quite a straight body. They look, they look different. The females have got tiny little wing buds, um, so they can't fly. The males have got wings, so they can fly. But we, these are one of the, one of the animals that are, where girls really rule because you don't need to have a male to have babies. The, you can just, the female will produce eggs without, ha without a male. And if you hatch those eggs, all of those eggs will be female eggs for female babies. So they'll be like little clones. Yep. They, they jump a tiny little bit sometimes if they get a fright. If you go to pick one up sometimes and you're not careful, they might jump a little bit. But when they're this big, because she's quite big now, they, do, they can't really jump when they're this big, can they? You've never seen them jump? No, a little bit when they're little. Yeah. Well, there are males because if there are, if the male and a female get together, then they produce eggs that are male and females. And we still need to have the males because if we just had those same females over and over and over, we wouldn't be getting any diversity, and that means we wouldn't be getting those tiny little changes. And we need that for the population to be really healthy. So we kind of still need the males. Uh, <laughs> so this is Twiggy and Charlie. Does anyone ha have any other questions about them? I've got a little one here too I'll bring out at the end for you to have a look at. Yeah, a little one of these ones. Okay? Yes. There is something. It is a stick insect. There's about 150 different sorts of stick insects in Australia and this is one of them and it's called, called a spiny leaf insect, yeah? Um, so they've got really thin legs and kind of fat 
body that sways, yeah. Yeah. So how do they like stabilise that? Yeah, because they've got really strong gripping feet. Yeah. So one of the other really cool things about them, when they lay their eggs, they just drop them from the top of a gum tree. So they don't do anything else special with them. They just, they give a bit of a flick of their tail and the eggs just drop out and they sort of flick them all over the place. And there's an ant that likes to eat a little bit of the egg and those ants come along and pick them up, pick up the eggs and take them down into the ant's nest and then they nibble off the top of the egg. But the rest of the egg, the one, the bit that's the special bit that's got the baby inside, it just sits in the, in the ant's nest and it's still safe. So it's a way for these animals to keep their eggs safe. So how cool is that? And then when they're born, you could have a look at the eggs. You can see the little knob on the top of the eggs. And when, when, when the babies are born, they run out quickly up, to, up onto the tree, but they actually look, when they're little babies, they look just like the ants. So the ants don't know they're any different. So they think they're just another ant. So they let them go. If they lose their, if they lose their legs, they can grow you, back. Do you tell us about that? Can you tell us that, Ben? If they lose their legs, they can grow back. Yeah. So if they lose their legs, because... <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were, you'd be growing your leg back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got to, you've got to molt. You've got to change your skeleton. Yeah. Yes, there would be. So that's some stick insect eggs. Yeah. So we're going to put these ones back because I've got some other ones to show you. Do you want to get um, legs? I'll get legs if you get that one from up the top. Oh, you're right. Her. Her, yeah. Her. Do you want to get the yeah. baby legs? Thank you. Want to get no, thank you, darling. Because this, this one can fly and we don't want to lose her. Is that a male? This is a female, but she's big. So this is another stick insect. Yeah. So this one's called a Goliath stick insect. So this one comes from Queensland too and we have to be a bit careful. This is a female, but she can fly, so we have to be careful. So she's the, one, she's the second biggest Australian stick insect. So this one's called a Goliath stick insect and then there's another one that's called a Titan stick insect. See this little one? This is a baby one of these. So this is what it looks like before it's grown as big as she is. So to grow, to grow, an insect needs to take off its skeleton and grow a new one underneath, and it's called molting. So each time they molt, they grow a new skeleton that's a bit bigger. Well, that one's going to end up being looking like this. So on her last molt, she's going to change from being like that and she, suddenly she's going to look green and she's going to have these beautiful stripes and she's going to have her beautiful wings. So each time they change, they can look a little bit different. Yes. What's that? That is a Goliath stick insect. And these just eat gum leaves as well. So they're another great pet. They do the same thing, yeah. Stick insects rule, don't they? <laughs> this one, the, the male has got a long straight body. It just looks, it just, they look slightly different. In the earlier, when they're early, young, it actually can be quite difficult. But as they get a bit older, they, the female, the male's got a little lump on, uh, on the end of his abdomen. So you can, you can tell the difference, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the Goliath stick insects. And the baby Goliath insect, insect is, the camouflage is just amazing. He'll just sit with his front legs out like this. I, I took them outside one day, I thought I'd um, get a photo of him on a tree so that I, I could, and I t turned around and I, it took me quite a while to find him again. He was just amazing. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, they're, they're really beautiful animals. 
Okay, so these animals, um, you can buy them. They can they actually send them through the post from Queensland. So you can get them as a young nymph through the post, but they do make fabulous pets. They're really fantastic and really beautiful, really beautiful. I know, a bit strange, but I think they're beautiful. Was that all in there? Just a little bit, but I think we'll No, we won't, yeah. So how many mums and dads like cockroaches? Uh, Is there any mums and dads? but they don't really bother me otherwise. I've seen the giant Have you? I like cockroaches. You like cockroaches, fantastic. Yeah. Well, most mum and dad cringe at the thought of cockroaches. And mostly those cockroaches that you're cringing at are ones that have come from um, Europe and they're not really even our cockroaches. So our cockroaches, we've got some beautiful cockroaches. And I've got Rodney Roach to show you. So I'll bring Rodney out. Is he big? He's pretty big. So this is Rodney Roach. And Rodney Roach is a a giant burrowing cockroach. So he comes from Queensland and northern New South Wales and he will live in a burrow up to a metre deep that he'll dig in the sand. So absolutely beautiful and you can notice how slowly he's walking. He's not a really fast running one. And you can see... You can see, I'll bring him around, that he's got really strong legs for digging because it, he digs big holes to live in. He does have spiky legs. Just, yeah, a little bit. That's it. So these cockroaches actually produce live babies. So they don't even have eggs. Well, they have eggs inside, but they have live babies. I've seen a little one at school. I've seen a little one at school. That's even better. They protect themselves. Well, they've got this big, big, strong exoskeleton on the outside. And they dig. They live a lot of the day and they only come out at night. They live most of the time inside their burrow. And they come out and guess what they eat? They just eat old gum leaves. Excuse me, can I have a close look? Yes, you can. Say hi, Rodney. Hi, Rodney. Mm. Wow, he's good. He's very good, isn't he? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so that's Rodney. So one of the other really cool things about some of the cockroaches, cockroaches are renowned to be, to be um, really tough animals. And there's some cockroaches that can live up to 10 days without a head. Now that's how tough they are. So, oh, bye. Well, the next animals I wanted to show you are actually ping and pong. So that's Ping hasn't come out to visit, but snails. Pong's come out. They're giant snails. What are they? These are giant panda snails. Oh. Yeah, he doesn't want to come out. Those are from Look. So these are land snails that come from New South Wales and Queensland again. So where do they come from? From Queensland. Oh, okay. I wanted ping to come out but he's not going to but they're cool see their big black antennae yeah yeah look at those and ping and pong like to eat cucumber so they we feed them lots of cucumbers yeah Queen, queensland has great bugs and they're called panda snails because of their black antennae. Let's see. Pretty cool. Yeah. So they have a great big fleshy foot. 
like that. And Ping's even bigger, but Ping's not being very cooperative, so he's not coming out. But pretty cool. Excuse me. Yes. Are panda snails endangered? No, panda snails aren't, but some of our land snails are endangered. Yeah, but panda <laughs> snails aren't. Did anyone not see Ping and Pong? So the last animal I wanted to show you is not an insect either, it's an arachnid. Does anyone know what an arachnid is? That's a spider. Well, and it's not even a spider, it's something else. Yeah, that's an arachnid. Mine's not a spider. Does anyone know something else that might be an arachnid? Yep. Yeah, mine's a scorpion. I've got Dora the Explorer. Dora the Explorer is a Flinders Ranger scorpion. So she comes from over near Adelaide. And she's really beautiful. She's a girl scorpion. Is she poisonous? She's a little bit poisonous, but not very much. So if she bites you, it would be just like a bee sting. Okay. So usually scorpions that have got really big claws out the front usually catch their prey with their claws so they don't have a very poisonous sting. If you've got one with quite little nippers out the front then you have to be a bit more careful. But Dora's actually quite a docile scorpion and she's very lovely. But one of the really cool things about scorpions is that they glow in UV light. So if I shine a UV light on Dora she'll glow and Scientists think that maybe because there's some UV light in the moon when scorpions go out to hunt, it makes her shine and other bugs come over to have a look at what this shiny thing is and what does she do? They hum and eats them up. So she eats crickets at my place and she's pretty keen on crickets. So I'll bring Dora around. We might sort of have to come in around it to make it a bit dark so we can see her. So we can see her with the... Ooh, oh yeah, UV rays. Where'd you find that? Oh, I got that from a pet shop. See her? See how she shines? She will bite. What does she bite with? Where is it? She on just, the back tail. Yeah, on the tail. Oh, okay. She just actually, she actually grabs her food with, with, her, with her nippers at the front, yeah. Is there any food in there? No, she doesn't have any food because she doesn't have to have something to eat every she's, day. She's not very big. She, no, because we don't have huge ones in Australia. Okay. See how she shines? She does shine. I will come around. See how she shines? That's awesome. She's pretty cool, isn't it? Make it a bit dark, make a little, come in and make a little bit of a tunnel and we'll make it a bit dark and you can see how shiny she is. Pretty cool? Yeah. And we'll bring some around here. Make it a bit dark, we need to huddle in a bit. Don't put your fingers in, but look how shiny she is. How beautiful and shiny she is. How about that? There you go. Is that cool? That's Dora. She's pretty cool. We'll make it a bit dark here too. So that's a UV light. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody, that's the end of my bit of a bug show. We've got some other great buggy things though here you can have a look at. Some great things under the microscope and some great water bugs. Um, yes, they can. I'll do that in a second. You're very welcome.